Well, I, 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 this is the first time I've ever met Rachel in person, in fact. Um, she looks just as strong as I thought she would. Uh, I have to say, this, to, to, even though your assets may all be in the U.S., uh, to have a several hundred thousand dollar pound judgment against you was a daunting uh, situation. You never know where your currency transactions are going to clear through. So that uh, I, I can imagine the, the period of sense of gloomy insecurity that have to stay in a dollar economy for quite a while. So I, I, I really do think that her, her fortitude, and I know so little Bible, I can't talk about Rachel the Bible, it's a cognition, but still the name is worthy of her. So I, I indeed salute her very, very much. Um, my, uh, my, my caution today, I suppose, is that it's an incomplete victory, because although the threat is now relieved that any British judgment would obtain recognition in an American court, still the British have not yet changed their libel law. And Floyd was very kind to offer to interview on behalf of my reputation at one point. Lord Hoffman gave a rather grumpy speech about uh, the observation of the UN Human Rights Committee that Article 19 of the Covenant on Civil and Political Rights was being sorely tested by British libel law. And we indeed uh, adopted that uh, uh, observation unanimously. There is now a debate in Britain. Uh, there are some voices of change. Jim will be pleased to know that, the, uh, that in the lecture of Lord Stein, the Boydell lecture, he recently said he thought that the use of specialist judges in libel might no longer be warranted. That's a, cat a category with one member, <laughs> E-A-D-Y. <laughs> so it was a rather adroit British uh, back of the hand to get rid of Judge Justice Eady, who indeed has been quite tendentious that's probably a libelous statement. You're uh, uh, maybe. In these hey, cases. Cool. In these cases. Right? Uh, uh, did he finally retire? He shall not. Uh, the, but the other reason I feel strongly about this is that I, I did not, I'm not quite sure how I became aware of it, but I, I, I was in contact with Robert Collins and Millard Burr, and I have friends who work at Cambridge Press. And the idea that Cambridge Press would not simply publish an errata or a stick on paste and correction but shred a book, shred a book, shades of Gerbil, shred a book, uh, and they just don't do that. It's, if, you're, if, you're a, if you're a bibliophile, this is a, it's a, a travesty of the nature of publication. And we then scheduled something at uh, Washington Institute, uh, and Robert Collins died shortly before he was due to appear, and his daughter could not find another publisher to take on the book. So I do think that the, this is the limit case of the abandonment of responsibility by a university press to support its author's right to free speech, and that really quite appalled me. I bought one copy at $20, seeing which way the, the market was headed on the internet. I felt like I should have a second copy, since they were all shredded. That went for $500. So I had the last two copies of Alms for Jihad. But the idea that you would have to tread so delicately in making any statement that you do in your ordinary professional life is quite incredible to me. So I think it's a very, very incumbent uh, on the members of the House and Senate, if they can spare the time, to monitor the British uh, reform proposals, to push it, help push it through the Parliament, to support Lord Stein in his ideas of reform. The Lord Chief Justice of England recently said, I'm not proud of reading, as I frequently do, that London is the libel capital of the world. I do not regard it as a badge of honor. I am deeply unsympathetic to forum shopping. And I do think that's important, particularly with some adverse uh, developments with WikiLeaks. It would give the, the current uh, conservative government an excuse not to go forward. But I think it's absolutely crucial to cement this on um, the other side of the pond, which is North Atlantic solidarity. Finally, be, beware that it's not simply libel law. It's also the uh, English importation of European privacy law because England has signed the European Convention on Human Rights, and there's a very rich, thick, uh, uh, inhibiting uh, idea of privacy in the European Court of Human Rights jurisprudence. So you could say something that was perfectly true, provably true, by you provably true, and still have it be seen a violation of the right to privacy in England. So I, I think we should not stop with this uh, brilliant law, but continue. Rachel, Rachel part two, if you will. <laughs>